Spring Framework 6.1 introduces REST Client, a new way to interact with HTTP backends in Spring Framework. And this may be a little bit confusing because we have already quite a few ways to interact with HTTP backends in Spring Framework, starting from REST template introduced in Spring Framework 3 in 2009, and then a web client introduced in Spring Framework 5 for the reactive stack. So why do we actually need a new client? The REST template started as a relatively small class. With a time, it grew to cover every use case of possible HTTP interactions, and it ended up being like a very long list of methods, so it's not very convenient to use. So the lessons learned, the web client introduced for the reactive stack is completely different. It has a fluent interface, which means that first we, the first way, the first step is to select the method, then we can provide some details about the request, like the URI, HTTP headers, then we finally execute the request and then we get the response or whatever we need from the response. And theoretically, you can use web client in also traditional servlet application, but then it means that you have to bring all the reactive stack. And most people don't want to do it. I believe most, at least I don't, and I know that many people on Twitter would agree. So there is a gap. I have a servlet application, but I want to have a nice HTTP client. In addition to that, HTTP interfaces introduced in Spring Framework 6.0 that I talked about some time ago, and you can see the video somewhere here, work only with web clients. So if you want to use HTTP interfaces, meaning declarative HTTP clients, you are somewhat forced to use web client. There's no other way until now. To summarize, REST client is a synchronous HTTP client with a fluent API of the web client and the same infrastructure as the REST template. And it can be used with the declarative HTTP interfaces. So it is a new modern alternative to the REST template. Let's now move to the code, slow down a little bit and see the REST client in action. And we will start from the use case where either you don't use Spring Boot or you just want to use REST client independently from Spring Boot auto configuration. And this could be either not a Spring Boot application or it could be also a migration from a REST template to a REST client. So REST client has static methods. One is create that will just create a default version of REST client. There is also a one that takes a base URL, but most importantly, there's one that takes a REST template. And it means that it copies all the REST template configuration, all the interceptors, customizers, and put them on the REST client. So we, if you have an existing application, it is very convenient way to move from existing REST template being that it's already somewhere defined to a REST client. There is also Builder, which is very similar to REST template Builder and Web Client Builder, where you can set pretty much anything you could possibly want to on a, on a REST client. In Spring Boot application, especially a new one, I believe you will not do it this way, right? You will rather follow the auto configuration provided by Spring Boot. So instead, you create a bean of a type REST client, and here you inject a REST client builder that comes auto configured by Spring Boot. And in the builder, we can, for example, set a base URL called the build method and to just return it. So now we are ready to inject REST client wherever we need to. For this demo, I'm just using application runner that gets executed when the Spring Boot application starts. And we are going to create a REST client that hits an API returning to do's, which is a dummy static public API that just returns some data. It's perfect if you just need an API that you just want to play with. So there are two endpoints we want to handle. One is slash to do's that returns the list of to do's. And then we can also get like individual to do. So let's copy this URL, go back here, and we will set the base URL to this JSON placeholder but without anything at the end, right? So just the base URL. And now if we want to get the, the individual to do, we use the REST client and there are only few methods to choose from and all of them represent the actual HTTP method. In our case, we want to execute a get method. So we call get. And now we can customize the request so we can make the URI more specific if we need to set some headers, like for example, an accept header, we can call a header method. For the to-do API, 
we just need to customize the URI. So the URI was slash to do's, or actually we should put these to do's over here because all of these methods start with to do's. So it will be just to do, and then there is an ID. And for a value, let's put 10, it doesn't really matter right now. Okay, so we call get, then we set the URI, and now I want to get the response. So I call the retrieve method, and now I have few options. Either I can call body, where I put the, what is the type? So in my case, I have to define a type. So let's define a type. This will be a record. Let's call it to do. And this record has a user ID, ID, title, and completed. So let's, we don't need to take it all. So let's do long ID, long user ID, and string title. So this is our record and we can call that I want to get a body of to do class. So that's the result. I can print it, run this application. Let's see if it works just to make sure. We got the first to do, but we don't have any information about the HTTP status or anything actually about the HTTP response except the body. So there is another method which is called to entity. And in this case, instead of returning an actual type, it will return a response ent entity, which we of course know from the REST template. And the response entity, uh, it shouldn't be actually called body, but let's call it response, has a status code, has response headers, and so on. Nothing actually new here. Okay, so let's leave it like this, uh, or maybe let's call it get body. In case you want to execute a post request where you don't care about the response body and you just want to get access to, let's say, the status code, you can also do to bodyless entity and this will return a response entity of type void. Very convenient. Now, if we want to retrieve all the to-dos and just to remind you, the all the to-dos look like just a regular JSON array. We have to do something that I, I'm not really a big fan of. So let's modify it that we don't need to set the URI because the base URI matches what we want to call. And when we call retrieve and we set the body, we have to, instead of concrete type, because we want a list of to-dos, we have to do parameterized type reference. So it is also very similar to what we had in the REST template, but it doesn't change the fact that I don't really like it. We need to pass a, just like a dummy object just for the sake of passing the type that we need here. And since we define the type here next to the variable, it can infer it or we can keep it over here and then do not declare the type for the variable Two options available. I've mentioned before HTTP interfaces, and I believe this is the really very important and the killer feature of REST client, because this was bugging me the whole last year that I want to use HTTP interfaces, but I don't want to introduce the reactive stack to my server application. Now it is possible. So let's take a look how this can be done. So first let's define an interface to do client. And just in case, if you are not familiar with HTTP interfaces, I made a separate video around one year ago about this very topic. Okay, so let's call, let's create an interface called to do client, and then we can set the, create a method, get exchange, that will return a list of to do's. So let's call this method to do's. We don't need to implement this interface, Spring will do it in the background, but we need to define a new bean. So this will be a bean of type to do client, we want to inject this very REST template. So, sorry, we want to inject this very REST client. So the so we do the REST client, and now we have to do something that it's uh, slightly verbose, and I hope that it will eventually change in Spring Framework. So we gotta do HTTP service proxy factory and use builder for REST client adapter create, then we pass the REST client we want to use over here. Then we call build 
and this is our factory. And now with this factory, we can create a client. So we can pass the type. So that's our client. We can return a client. And now instead of injecting here the rest client, we can inject the to do client. To do client, to do's. Let's just run it to make sure that it actually works. So REST client gives you imperative interface. You have more control or more maybe more dynamic control. With the HTTP interfaces, it is all very declarative. And I believe it will serve you very well in most of the use cases. There is one more big difference between REST client and the REST template. And this is the actual HTTP client that they use under the hood. So you must know that neither REST template, web client, or the REST client, they are not the actual HTTP clients that execute the network requests. They are more like a facade, sitting like a higher level interface, sitting on the top of something that does the lower level work. And in case of REST template, this could be either the default one, which is the HTTP URL connection, then there can be also, you can also use the Apache HTTP client or OK HTTP. For web client, this is either Netty or Jetty and probably maybe something more, something else that I don't know about. And it's very similar also to REST client. So you can use the Apache web client, you can use OK HTTP, but you can also use the HTTP client that it was introduced in Java 10 or 11, I don't know. The, so basically the one that is baked into the JDK that you already have. So there's no need for extra dependency. And what's important, this is the default HTTP client used by REST client. And just for the sake of reference, REST template uses HTTP URL connection by default. So something to keep in mind. Overall, I'm extremely happy with REST client, except that the naming is a little bit off but it is consistently off with the same way the REST template was not maybe the perfect name because this is not so much about REST but more about HTTP. I think REST client is a great step forward and I especially like the fact that I can use it with HTTP interfaces that I love. And honestly, I don't see a reason anymore to use REST template. So for all the new applications that I will build, the REST client will be my default choice. Let me know what you think about this video and also REST clients in the comments. If you have any questions or I haven't explained anything well, just write a comment and I will try to answer it better. Thanks a lot for watching. Of course, I would be grateful if you hit the like button and subscribe the channel as I hope to put more videos than I used to in past year. Thank you and see you next time.